Hi guys, no sooner did I get rid of that uh, Sonova roof job than we have this Horizon roof job. And it's probably the worst roof I've ever seen on a mo motorhome. That's not encouraging, right? So we're back over here at Casones RV in Mesa, Arizona, and we're going to work on this 2005 Winnebago Horizon. Actually, it's Itasca Horizon. We got in a hail storm a while ago, and nobody did anything about it for a little bit too long. Let's take a look at it. So we got Chad up there. He's already getting the rear cap loose. We just got the front cap loose. Chad finishes up the, uh, getting the rear cap loose. We'll give you the big reveal here. It's uh, not good. In fact, it's bowed down in the middle. I can't walk over there because this layer of plywood, even though it's an eighth inch thick, you can see right there, that gives a lot of strength to it. Now, if I were to bring the camera down, you should start seeing it's actually sinking into the roof. So again, not good is an understatement. The apparent story I'm getting is that there was a hailstorm, damaged the roof, uh, wind took it the rest of the way, and I don't know if the owner couldn't find anybody to repair it. They just put a tarp over it for a while and sat on their hands trying to decide what to do. So now we get to try to rebuild this roof. So this is going to be the process. Just like any of these Winnebago roof replacements, we need to uh, rip off all the old stuff. Now, I can't go too far out here because I don't want to break the pipe of styrofoam. Don't fall through. But this whole roof could not support my weight right now. No. That's not even like half my weight. And James is skinny. <laughs> so you can almost see the only ribs that they have right there. And that's just to keep the fall, side walls from flexing. It has nothing to do with structure. It's so hot. <laughs> but at least it's hot, it the putty. The sealant real warm. It makes it come off real easy. So we're gonna have to uh, replace all the plywood paneling too. So what we'll do first after getting all the components off the roof, before we get to this point where it's all really bad, we'll stabilize the rest of the roof. That way we have a nice strong roof to work with. We can only do one panel at a time. What we will likely have to do is go inside, lift up using jacks and supports to bring the ceiling back into place, and then relaminate that section, one section at a time. I didn't go around looking for this job, that's for sure. It's pretty bad. Uh, I wish I could make a more what's that, provocative video. We've definitely done enough Winnebago roof replacements so that I don't have to do step by step with you guys, but I do want you to see what's going on. I'll try to give you the highlights of this one, because this one's pretty bad. Just do it! Yeah! Do it! Do it now? Do it! It's broken anyway, right? Yeah. You know, it's a lot easier to take it off that way than to take the screws out. Only when it's all rotten. It's broken. Right. Huh. It's a little bit of water damage right about there. I wonder how that happened. No idea. Move it forward. Before you drop That's down. good! That's good! Alright, well there's the first piece of many. Oh, there's the second piece. Bigger. Here's his bigger. <laughs> Chad might be upset with me because he's in the sun, not me. Well, we're on the front here. It's pretty surprising to see us. Maybe an inch overlap between the cap and the roof. And unsurprisingly, it had been leaking there because what if I could, for some reason, decides they don't have to put lap sealing on their front caps? Don't worry, we'll put that back on. They also did not even cover their alignment hole on this side. Their alignment hole? Yeah. Oh, come was, on. You don't have to. There was an eighth inch. Exposed? Uncovered, yeah. If it was important, they would have covered it. There's your logic. Well, I started ripping this up. I think it might have been leaking through that tiny little hole when a bagel put in there. I don't know how I know this, but I'm pretty confident by that. Thanks, Winnebago. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. <laughs> I think unsurprisingly it also looks like those uh, awning bolts are also leaking right there. They hardly sealed it, so it's not surprising. Okay, so we successfully stripped off the roof. We will get the roof braced now in the middle so we can start replacing the plywood on it. But yeah, I was really surprised to see how little uh, overhang Winnebago had on the front cap. And that water leak over there was from Winnebago, and 
This front cap being loose right here, that's from Winnebago. So there's a lot of problems from Winnebago. I mean, the big problem in the middle was definitely when it wasn't Winnebago. Let's see if we can't get this thing braced back up. I think we got all the supplies we need. Let's get out of here. What we're gonna do is brace the center of this uh, roof. Pay no attention to the uh, fabric. I don't know if you can see me moving the entire roof. But in order to brace the roof, I'm gonna have to move uh, some of the stuff out of the way. So I take the light bezel down. It may not look like much, but it's going to work out pretty well. Um, everything's screwed together. I'm just going to have to raise these uh, stands just by turning this right there. The other way, obviously. And that will raise and jack the middle of the ceiling up. What I need to do is put the crown back in the roof and lift the whole thing up. And it's not like an extreme amount of weight or pressure on it, because I can move it really easily by hand. But we're going to be on the roof also, stepping around. i got to make sure that it doesn't fall down. So I think it's mounted pretty well. Everything's screwed together. Are you ready? Okay, may not look like much. I'm not a home builder, but this is doing what it needed to do. Like I said, the roofs are actually not very heavy. There's not a lot of tension on this. We just need to keep it up out of the way. And we're gonna have to fix this saline fabric anyways. Let's get on the roof. We'll take a look at see what, what I can see. Then we'll start changing out the paneling because that was, this is really important for the, for the paneling. Cause uh, we don't wanna glue it down in a, when the roof's bowed in, because it'll stay in that position. We need to glue it when it's in the up position. The, the paneling and the phylone actually, once, once it's uh, laminated, will hold everything together, hopefully in a better position. Like I said, it's really surprising what eighth inch paneling does for strength on these uh, laminated roofs, but it does work. All right, so where are we at right here? It's hard to see, but it definitely was bowed in quite a bit before. And this looks about right. Now, what if bagels aren't? pristine and perfect even brand new from the factory there's usually a little bit of a uphill at the front cap and you might notice a few waves in them especially the longer they get but i think that's going to work we're just going to start doing the plywood if we were smart we'd start in the back where it's sunny but we're probably not smart i'll let chad make the choice all right well let's see we got one panel ripped off and again I have lots of videos about these uh, Winnebago roofs, so I probably won't take you through the entire process of this again. I'll just put the link to more roofs right there. I know I said I wouldn't bore everybody, but we're going to use Stabon 183 Red for the foam to wood, so we don't melt the foam, and Stabon 440C for the wood to file on. No foam. That's it. That's it. One down, a lot more to go. All right, just for fun, we're gonna add some insulation to this roof. There's a big old uh, chunk of foam missing. It's actually right it out. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be missing, but. There's a big chunk. There's yeah. a big chunk, let a lot of heat in right there. Yeah. I'm really not sure what's going on up there either. Winnebago does weird things. Lasers. Lasers. All right, well, I guess it's done. The new deck's on. Just got to get the fiberglass on now. Sure, it's a lot stronger already. I bet Chad could even walk right there. Hey, look at that. Nice. Well, same thing as always. Throw out the uh, new material onto the roof. We found the center line. Find the center line of this one. And then we'll glue it down. It's really boring. So at least we're proud of the process. Well, look at that. 
<laughs> Almost got it. A little bit more to go. Work it. Okay. Final Ready? roll. There we go. Don't go too tight. All right. Let Chad roll that out a little bit. Give my knees a break. And then technically, this roof is down. You not be able to appreciate it, but there's supposed to be a storm coming in. So we have to get this roof tucked today too. Let me get out of Chad's way. Well, here we did it. Oh, it's on my mouth there. Now the roof's installed. Well, at least laid down and tucked. I think Chad's saying that we're getting pretty good at these now. It's only taking us two weeks instead of three years. Wow. I don't think he said that. I didn't say that. But we're tucked in and I think we're looking pretty good. But it does feel a whole lot stronger than it did. All right guys, so we got the front cap down. We're gonna get the screws on the side of it like you see on all my videos. And we just have to put all the components back on the top. We'll do some modifications, but uh, after that, before we can put this awning back on, we still have to paint the radius because that's going to be hard to paint with the awning on. And likely, we're only going to go one color on the radius. That's the plan. So then here are those side screws that we keep putting in. Like I said, Winnebago puts these in now. So either I copied them or they copied me. I don't know which one is which. So nice. Look how much that oozed everywhere. All right, well, Chad's just finishing up sealing. Just got to do the uh, line across the front. And I think we got this down just in time for a storm. So yeah, it's been a wet monsoon here. Another storm coming in. But the roof's done. Not completely done. Still have to do the side molding. Gutter seal, but we have to paint it too. I originally ended the video there, but it didn't seem like a good ending because I was hot. So let's take a look at this roof one last time. It's not done. Like I said, we still have to paint it and so we still have to uh, seal it. But we needed to stabilize this roof so we could work on the inside and get it protected from the storm. We tried a standard skylight rather than the Winnebago one, and it seems to work out just fine. It was a heck of a lot cheaper. Uh, we'll have to replace the TV, the radio antennas right there. And you may have seen it in the video right about there and right about there, big rectangular things. That was some sheet metal Winnebago embedded where those uh, ceiling recess lights are in. I don't know if it's just to protect anything or just to put out more strength where all that foam is gone from the lights being recessed back in. We will have to put the awning back in. The awning rail goes right up on top, screws into the aluminum extrusion right here. We'll seal that a lot better. And these air horns weren't very fun put back together. Winnebago does some weird things. I did think about moving these back underneath the front cap. but. That seemed like more work too. We can see all the clear coats been carefully aged. But then the hole that was right there. No, I didn't explain it very well. Winnebago has big overhead gantry cranes where they bring the, the roof over and set it down to the sidewalls. And they make holes in the sidewalls and in the roof. All the big components basically that they can get a alignment punch put in and center the, the panels in there. So that hole that was right there was an alignment hole. So when they put the roof down, they can pin it almost like an iron worker might. But that was, I don't know how a CAD drawing got that, that far off, but that hole was just barely, barely exposed, which of course caused problems. Winnebago would just put a lap seal right here, no problem. Now again, 
The story I got that was that it was a hail damage, uh, but I don't think that was hail damage. I think that was neglect. I think the windstorm took it, and I think the hail damage was a story that the insurance company got. I don't know the exact story on who owns this. I'm just helping out the guys over here at Cassone's. Trying to get this 2005 Itasca Horizon roof together and back on. And I think we did a pretty good job. I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Believe it or not, there's another one that we'll be doing next week. And then another one in two weeks. It's almost like Winnebago has an issue. I tried to show all the uh, defects that I did find while taking this one apart. Like I said, we have quite a few videos on these Winnebago roofs now. If there's anything you guys can take away from this is that these roofs need constant maintenance and uh, upkeep. And you gotta keep the water out of it. We still have to go down below, put that ceiling back together. I'm not confident while I'll make a video on that. Now don't forget, Winnebago uses self-leveling silicone sealant for a lap sealant. It is not Dicor. Dicor will not stick to it. Now if you have a plastic bag that gets blown by the wind into that fresh sealant, it might make it look gross. At any rate, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye. Winnebago uses a uh, pretty unique roof structure when they build their roofs. I'll put a link to all my Winnebago roof videos, so if you guys want to know how it works, that's how it's going to be. But they, they do a laminated roof, uh, styrofoam core with two layers of eighth inch Luon paneling. There's really no framing or support structure within the roof itself. It's all within the design arc of the roof and the lamination that makes the roof strong. To say Winnebago has a unique roof would be pretty, un pretty much an understatement. What do you think, Chad? They make it their own. Oh. It's bad. Real bad? Pretty bad. Well. Well, the added step is we get to take the patio awning off of this one. Well, the right people to do the job, I suppose. No, the idiots. The idiots that do the job, not the right people. Well. Well, okay, I'm an idiot. You're the right person. We'll leave it at that. It's always summer when we do these. Are we just stupid? Yeah. So, I didn't go around looking for this job, that's for sure. It's pretty bad. Uh, I wish I could make a more what's that, provocative video. So I get all those clickbaits, but I don't have time. It's too hot to you spend too much time on this. Yeah, like <laughs> no, I can't take my shirt off yet. So that's pretty much the the first step is just get everything on the roof, get everything off the roof, and start uh, replacing the plywood first. Do it, Chad. Do it. Well, yeah. Everybody always complains about me not meeting OSHA requirements. This is definitely OSHA compliant. Careful. That's, that that roof's like. 180 degrees. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this the uh, children's way. Hands and knees. Does that make me a bad friend to just watch you suffer? See how rusty this rib is? I do. That one might go away. Yeah, for sure. You did it! I'm, I'm very proud of you. So, let's see if we can't... Let's see if we can't get this thing braced back up. It's too hot. We gotta get to work. To handle. Too cold to hold. Woo. You gotta do what you gotta do. Thank you, Milwaukee.